In the 40 years between 1870 and 1910, the United States experienced technological growth that was unparalleled in history. This growth changed everything about life in America and gave us much of the world that we know today. In our series of podcasts about these technological innovations, we'll continue now by examining Thomas Edison and his inventions. My name is Dr. Rick Gardner from Columbus State University. This is another Muskogee County School District podcast, Thomas Edison and his inventions. Like Alexander Graham Bell, Thomas Edison was fascinated with the most important invention of the early 19th century, the telegraph. Edison was a telegraph operator for the Western Union, and one of his first inventions was a contraption that permitted several telegraphs to be sent and received simultaneously. Western Union needed this technology because it would eventually be worth millions to them and eventually to their partner company, Bell Telephone. So they offered Edison $10,000 for the patent. Today, that would be the equivalent of about a quarter million dollars. So Edison accepted the money, and he was so excited about his vocation of inventing, he used the money to purchase a laboratory in Menlo Park, New Jersey, which would be dedicated solely to the purpose of inventing new technologies for America and for his own profit. The year after Bell invented the telephone in 1876, Edison experienced another major breakthrough. You see, about 50 years prior, a machine had been invented in Europe that captured pictures on a page using light. The name of that invention was the light drawing, but it was better known by the Greek words for light and drawing, photo, light, graph, drawing the photograph. Edison attempted to apply the same concept to sound, and in 1877, he was successful. He invented the sound drawing, also better known by the Greek words for sound and drawing, phono, sound, and graph, drawing, the phonograph. This invention allowed people to record music, speeches, or any other sounds on small cylinders and play them back whenever they desired. It was the prototype for all of our modern day world of recorded music, CDs, MP3s, iTunes and iPods, even the very recording that I'm doing right this minute. Can you imagine a world today without these? For the general public, Edison's invention of the phonograph seemed like a piece of of magic, of wizardry. And so from that time on, he would be referred to often as the wizard of Menlo Park. Now, Edison's most significant quest was to do something with electricity. Franklin invented the lightning rod to save buildings from the destruction of electricity. Samuel Morse invented a means to communicate using electricity, the telegraph. And Alexander Graham Bell invented a means to send sound through electric wires, the telephone. What else might electricity be able to do, wondered Edison. Well, shortly after he invented the phonograph, Edison became convinced that he could use electricity as a means to generate light. He believed that electricity could replace candles, lanterns, and gas lights as the principal means by which the world is illuminated at night. Edison was certain there was some sort of substance, some filament that would light up when electricity passed through it. Actually, there were quite a few. The problem was that the heat from the light would make the filaments burn and break ending the flow of electricity. He needed to find a filament that would not burn up. First, he realized the most important key was that the wire and the filament had to be put in a vacuum, 
an oxygen-free glass bulb in order to prevent the filament from flaming up. Next, he had to find a filament that would light up but would not burn out when electricity passed through it. After hundreds and hundreds of experiments with various materials, Edison found exactly what he was looking for, baked cotton. When cotton was baked, it turned into a carbon filament that would light up when electricity passed through it, and it would not burn out for 40 hours. Later, Edison turned to a bamboo-based carbon filament, and eventually the industry turned to tungsten, which has been used in light bulbs until recent years. Well, if you fly on a plane late at night, you'll see how important this invention of the light bulb was to our entire planet. Can you imagine a world with no light bulbs? On the day of Edison's death, President Hoover gave an executive order that no one use light bulbs that night. That was extremely hard for Americans to do, and that was in 1931. Can you imagine a president making that order today? Edison went on to take the proceeds from the profit of his powerful and significant invention of the light bulb, and he formed a company that's called General Electric, also known as GE. The best-selling light bulbs in the history of the world are GE light bulbs. It is one of the largest and most profitable companies still in existence today. So we've talked about Edison and the phonograph. We've talked about his invention of the light bulb. And in the next podcast, we'll look at one more of Edison's contributions to American life, motion pictures, known fondly to all of us as movies. My name is Dr. Rick Gardner from Columbus State University. This has been another Muskogee County School District podcast. Thomas Edison and his inventions.